Welcome to Richfield High School as TSB Television proudly presents high school girls basketball. Today, a non-conference game, but an exciting one at hand as the Richfield Spartans host the Providence Academy Lions. Providence Academy, a representative in the Class 2A state championship last year, and Richfield, an up-and-coming team. Hello, everyone. I'm Mike Needham. Thank you for joining us. Two exciting teams in a cross-class clash. Richfield coming in at 3-1. and one. Their only loss was to Minnetonka at the Breakdown Sports USA Tip-Off Classic. They're not a big team. That hasn't changed from last year. But their go-to on offense is Jessica January. She's been a little up and down so far this season. Just 21 points per game coming into tonight. Not on any leaderboards in the Minnesota State High School League, but look out, she can put up a lot of points in a hurry, and it's already crossed 1,000 career points. Providence Academy doesn't run the ball as much. They're more of a deliberate, take their time team. They're very patient with their shot selection, but they have some playmakers as well, and that includes the coach's daughter, Taylor Finley, who had a big performance against Blaine back at the Pat Patterson Thanksgiving tip-off tournament. Let's take a look at the keys to the game. We'll start with Providence Academy. Obviously, they want to stop Jessica January when you put up 21 points per game this season. You know you've got a prolific scorer and dynamic playmaker, but she is the offensive catalyst. Rebounding is going to be another key because they have the height advantage. Most teams against Richfield will have the height advantage this season. And calm and stay in control. First game of the year against Lakeville North, Providence Academy looked out of focus. They were nervous and they could not get many shots to fall, and Lakeville North had the game in the books by the end of the first half. For Richfield, they want to limit the offensive execution, of course, because Providence is going to be a slower team, not getting as many shots off, so limiting what shots they do take, because Providence will have to hit a few in order to be successful. They want to make sure they block out well because of their height disadvantage, and so it's going to put the pressure on players like Brianne Guyton, and transition will be important. They have a more athletic team, more up-tempo team, so they'll look to get some fast break points, maybe some points in the paint. Stick around, our game will start shortly. You're watching High School Girls Basketball. The starting lineups for tonight's contest. Providence Academy will start Leah Zabla, number one at guard. Taylor Finley, number two at guard. Natalie Ratliff, number three, she's also a guard. Number 11, Anne-Marie Healy at forward, and Katie Nordic, number 33, at forward. And for Richfield, not much change if you followed our coverage last year. Jessica January, the 5'7 guard, will get the start, as well as Brianne Guyton, the 5'10 center. Number 25, Sierra Ford Washington, the 5'6 guard, number 30. Hannah Wise, the 5'8 guard, number 35. And Leah Barnes, 6'1", freshman center. So Richfield will have a little more size in the post to start the game. But when you're starting a freshman center at this level, stamina will be a factor. Providence Academy, as we mentioned, 4-2. and two. They got to the third place game in last year's state championship had a couple of heartbreakers against Bram. Once at the Breakdown Sports USA tip-off classic, losing on an Austin Ang buzzer beater, and a second time in the semifinal round when Bram had full control over Providence and went on to win the Class 2A state championship. But Providence is favored among some experts to win this year's Class 2A title. And should they get there, Richfield will not be battling against them because they're in Class 3A. So. No consequence tonight, win or lose, but a strong game, which means a lot of fun and hopefully a great game for the folks at home. Richfield wearing their crimson jerseys, Providence wearing white. And Marie Healy kicks things off for Providence. Handing off to Taylor Finley. She's the daughter of head coach Ray Finley. He won a state championship in 1994 with Blake in the two-class system going undefeated. One of his assistants, Faith Johnson-Patterson, and one of his players, Lisa von Steinbergs. This is Nordic with the ball. She is guarded by Leah Barnes, the freshman center. Goes for the layup and comes up short. And there's a transition game 
game we were talking about, Sierra Ford Washington gets on the board. Richfield will try to beat Providence with their speed. Here is Healy. When you look at the two, you see a significant difference in terms of leading scores. Taylor Finley, Providence's leading scorer, she averages over 12 points per game. Jessica January averaging over 21 points per game. And that's with an up and down season in the words of assistant coach Scott Statham. Here's Ford Washington with the ball. Scramble for possession. He will stay from Richfield. Richfield lost to Horno last year in section play. And Ford Washington overthrows Hannah Wise and a Richfield turnover. There's a 10 second roll in the backcourt and Finley will take it herself. Ratliff looking for a target, finds Zabla inside and Ratliff was fouled from behind by Ford Washington as she had an open look to the basket. But the officials rule it a non-shooting foul. And perhaps a break for Richfield, as Ratliff had an open lane, could have easily drove. Just underway in the first half. Zombla to Finley. Finley thought about a three. Thinks otherwise. Hands off to Ratliff. Now back to Finley. Over to Healy from the right wing. Her three-pointers off the mark. And a scramble for the rebound. It will go to Richfield after a battle between Wise and Ratliff. 2-0 Richfield over Providence. And we'll get our first substitution from Leanne Wise and her Richfield Spartans. Number 33, name not on the program. We'll do the best we can to get that for you. Ford Washington over to January. January scored 27 points in the last game. Instead, dishes out to 33, our mysterious post player. That's no good. Only two points so far, and that, they were scored by Ford Washington. Providence has yet to get on the board. Finley over to Ratliff. Keeley. Ratliff looking for Nordic, and Nordic can't haul in the pass. Our webcast coverage this season, assisted in part by GrandStadium.tv, so we want to give them a thanks for their hospitality throughout the basketball season. They, of course, will be in charge of the state tournament broadcast in March. But we've got a long way to go. Leah Barnes gets on the board with a little hook from the right side. Richfield with a 4-0 lead. And a tough layup. Leah Zabla used up her dribble, and I thought she was going to be called for traveling, but gets the layup, 4-2. January over to Ford Washington. Wise with possession. Keep an eye on January, of course, number 14. Dyed her hair blonde this year, making her a little easier to spot. Ford Washington over to 33, still working on a name, and Wise is blocked from behind, and look out, Mike York. More substitutions, Brianne Guyton going in, Barnes stepping out for Richfield, and for the first appearance in the game, Haley Lindblom, the 5'5 junior guard. Wasting no time draining the three-pointer. Well, I wasn't looking. Sneaky little rascal. Richfield with a 7-2 lead. Finley over to Healy. Healy drives in the lane, yes! 
And it's 7-4 in favor of Richfield. Ford Washington inside to January. Out to Guyton. 15-footer is off the mark. And Nordic hauls in the rebound, but she's in trouble. And now weaves through the hole. Providence will have a chance to set up their offense. Zabla over to Healy. Long two. Swish. Healy with four points. And Lindblom fires another three, but is off target. Close game in the opening minutes. And almost losing possession is Zabla. And Finley just recovers before it goes over the half court line, avoiding the backcourt violation. No shot clock, of course. Finley for three, yes. And Providence takes their first lead of the game, 9-7. Still early, though, 12.58 left in the first half. Still haven't seen anything out of January yet. Had a breakout year, but throws it away. And on the breakaway is Ratliff. And one. Hannah Wise will be tagged for the foul. And Providence on a run. Nine nothing, I believe. Ratliff will have a chance to make it 10 nothing. Ratliff, the 5'8 junior guard. Providence and Richfield, very similar in that both schools had young teams last year. This season, they returned most of their big names. So two experienced teams with a few changes here and there. And Providence will have that same core next year as Guyton is short on the fadeaway. Lindblom, long two, is off target. Only... Two seniors on Providence's varsity roster this year, Nordic and Healy, but they're going to have the core of Zabla, Finley, and Ratliff available to them next year. And Richfield also set up pretty well. Guyton's a senior, so she won't be back. And Wise is also a senior, but you do have January and Ford Washington. And Barnes, who gets the steal. January trips up, stays on her feet to avoid the traveling violation. And we'll try again. January tried to dish inside to Barnes, but getting in the passing lane was Ratliff. Not a good start for Jessica January, a two-time state champion hurdler. Nordic is fouled on the basket counts. And the Providence run continues. Nordic, we mentioned one of the two seniors on Providence's roster this season. 5'11", senior forward. Providence within the metro area, of course, so they can play schools like Richfield and Minnehaha in their conference, the Tri-Metro West Division. Providence will have a lot of competition this year. One of their victories was against De La Salle. Their last game, taking down the defending 3A state champions. The two schools won't play each other in state tournament play. But Providence getting a lot of quality wins to start the year. Wise can fire a three, but she's no good. Rebound Zabla. Healy can't haul on the pass, and saving it is Hapke. Number 31 in the game for Providence. McKenna Hapke is her full name for those of you watching at home, especially her relatives, friends, parents. Zabla over to Ratliff, and this is Providence's style. They're very patient with their shot selection. They're not going to rush it unless they see an opening. Finley, double team. And Ray Finley will call a timeout to restore order for his Providence Academy Lions.
McKenzie is the only coach to win four back-to-back -back state titles in the 99-year history of the Minnesota State Boys Basketball Tournament. And now he is sharing his success and strategies for winning on the court and in life. Basketball, more than just a game, is a must-read for young athletes and their parents navigating the game. Incorporating 10 life lessons, Coach McKenzie shows why basketball is merely a metaphor and a tool that can be used to transform lives. Get your copy today. Go to CoachMcKenzie.com, where a portion of the proceeds will go to support the Above the Rim Sports Foundation, a 501c3 that supports youth sports. Once again, that is CoachMcKenzie.com. Real simple, CoachMcKenzie.com. A must-read. Check it out today. Welcome back to Ridgefield High School as TSB Television continues its coverage of high school girls basketball between the Richfield Spartans and the Providence Academy Lions. Richfield, a Class 3A participant. Providence Academy, Class 2A participant. Taking a look at the first half stats, leading scores is Anthony Healy with nine points. Taylor Finley has six. Natalie Ratliff has seven as Providence just comes out of the locker room. I think, again, Ray Finley doing his best to manage his players. Again, he doesn't use a deep roster. 
Katie Nordic also has five points. For Richfield, Hannah Wise with two threes. She has six. Leah Barnes with four. Jessica January also with four. Only one field goal in the first half. Ford Washington with two. Lindblom with three. Big first half run set the tone for Providence Academy. They were trailing by five. And now they have a 29-19 lead. They led by as much as 12 in the first half. And it's going to come down to offensive execution for Richfield. Again, this game is of no consequence in the overall standings and rankings because they won't play each other in playoff format. But Providence proving it can play with the big teams in the state, getting a big win over De La Salle in a tri-metro conference game, both in the West Division. Richfield, their only loss was to Minnetonka. Three victories, including a convincing win over Apple Valley. In a game, Leon Wise, the head coach of Richfield, thought was going to be closer than it was, but you know, Richfield, a little up and down, but when they're up, they are up big time. The key for Providence, of course, will be making the most of their possessions here. And Barnes blocked, but she stepped on the out-of-bounds line. Not happy with herself about it, but it's hard to stop yourself in motion. And it appears we have a slick spot on the court, so the officials will clear that up because we certainly don't want players slipping more than they are. We have a slick announcer to go with the slick spot. So while the referees clean that up, we want to remind you that if you want to purchase a DVD copy of this game, just visit the communityhoops.com page. There will also be a link on the TSB Sports page. In the communityhoops.com page, you, you can uh, get set up via PayPal and get your copy of this and many other games to come, including the Ridgefield Holiday Classic Tournament later this month. And that will feature Bloomington Kennedy and Leah Zabla with the inside layup. Bumped her way in. She has four. Quiet night for her so far, but Providence not needing to be too flashy. Guyton, too strong. Leah Barnes, no good. And Guyton, third time is the charm. Guyton with the first field goal. The Richfield Holiday Classic will feature Richfield, of course, being the host team. Bloomington Kennedy, a front runner in Class 4A, although Hopkins is the heavy favorite to win the title. And Prairie Seats Academy, a team in its first full season under head coach Tamara Moore. 31 21 the score. Richfield's going to need a few stops here because Providence will eat up some time. And Guyton forces the jump ball. And that is, in effect, a turnover because Richfield holds the possession arrow. Let's see if January can get things settled on offense. Wise, missed. That was for three. Rebound, Ratliff. Zabla guarded by January. And another Providence Academy turnover that's happened a couple times tonight as the ball heads under the ladder. And January's gonna go get it. Didn't walk under the ladder. So for those of you involved in superstitions, no bad luck for January. They're just gonna need a few baskets so to put the pressure on Providence. Wise tries again, and this time drains the three. All of Hannah Wise's baskets are three-pointers. She has nine. A 
it stays Providence ball. Another element to watch in the second half. Leah Zabla, she has three fouls. Has played in every minute so far against Richfield. If she gets five, she is disqualified. And that'll put her on the highlight reel. Nice runner. She has six. Guyton loses the ball. Richfield just not establishing significant ball control and that's where Providence has eaten them up. Thirty-three twenty-four. the score. Finley over to Nordic and Providence will just eat up more time. They have a nine point lead and in theory they could eat up all 14-35 but they're not going to and why would they when you get players like Ratliff open? That has been the most effective play for Providence throughout the game. Ratliff with a dozen leading all players. January, swish. January, need to get going if Richfield stands a logistical chance, a realistic chance. And here comes some pressure from Richfield. It's a jump ball, Providence with the possession arrow, but Anne-Marie Healy was left alone. She and Leah Zabler are having a discussion. Healy, I think, was a little surprised. Richfield changing up their defense. Again, Providence has the height advantage overall. And I think Richfield is figuring out we can't run half court sets the entire game or we're going to play right into Providence's hands. Because that is our strength. Jordan Meyer back in the game for the Lions. Zabla. No good. Was open right side of the baseline. Couldn't put it in. Guyton. Hands off to Wise, and Wise is short inside the paint. That was a basket Richfield needed. Five seconds, no, Ray Finley calls timeout. Always interesting when you have two contrasting styles. Providence has, so far has been the dominant team. Richfield content to stick with those half court sets. They haven't forced too many turnovers on Providence and that's why they have a 35 to 26 lead. We'll be back in Ridgefield one more time before their holiday tournament when they host Orno in a key sectional matchup. Those two could face each other in section play come playoff time. And Orno was the team that unseated or unseated Ridgefield from a postseason state tournament appearance. Well, Ratliff, the only player in double digits with 12. Again, Providence is not going to have a ton of points every game. That is their style. They're not going to impress people on the scoreboard. But it's the wins that count. As we mentioned January, just outside the leaderboards in scoring. Of course, Rebecca Dahlman leading the state in that category. And Whitney Burmester out of Tartan on her tail. Another unfortunate Providence pass. They've had a few of them. And January, no look pass to Wise, and Wise can't hit the long two. I know one of the keys to the game was containing January, and that hasn't been hard to do. January's only made two field goals all night. 
Nordic nearly trips. Zabla does trip, traveling violation. But from my own observations, whatever they're worth, I haven't seen a lot of aggressiveness a lot, or a lot of call to arms from Jessica January. And she's been feeding two other players, which you would expect out of a guard. Who's your catalyst for offense, but she may need to get Richfield going as they're down by nine, which doesn't seem like much, but against a team with the tempo that Providence plays, nine points may as well be 19. And Richfield slowing things up a bit. They were setting up for Lindblom. She missed the three. And an easy rebound for Providence. Had to work a little bit to get it. And a bailout foul. Had to work a little bit to get it, but nobody from Richfield was inside. Oh, well, Providence just had to hang around. Fouls on Barnes are second. Meyer and Nordic will step out. Healy and Hapke step back in. Fenley. There was no opportunity for a fast break, so Providence will back off. Zabla left alone and draws the foul. Zabla hasn't been the flashiest player tonight. I'm going to go on Facebook. Zabla hasn't been the flashiest player tonight. But she's come up with some big plays when she's needed to, although she misses the front end of that free throw. And the reason I mentioned Facebook is I got a few snapshots taken of me. Zabla misses both. And a little miscommunication. And Richfield hauls it in. So here's a chance for the Spartans. Here's January out to Wise. And Wise left open on the right side. But Providence does wrap her up and we've got a foul on the Lions. Let's see who it's on. This is the first foul of the second half. It's on Ratliff, so that's her first. That puts Sierra Ford Washington at the line. And her first free throw is no good. Free throw's not an automatic thing in high school basketball. You get your occasional sharpshooters there. Kiara Buford was one, Taylor Hill was another one. But not an exact science in general. Fort Washington gets the back in. And free throws, how many times have they decided games? It's something I'd like to see more emphasis on, but I'm here out here to play quarterback, but look at this, a breakaway and a fast break for Ridgefield. That's what they were able to establish early. Sierra Ford Washington with the basket. But Providence has shut them down for the transition game for the most part. 35-29, Providence with a six-point lead. Ratliff bumped a bit by Lindblom, but officials rule an incidental. Healy left alone, too strong. Apke with the rebound. No put back, and Guyton called for a foul as she tried to haul in the board. Should say she drew the foul, it's on Hapke. And here's the chance Richfield may have been looking for. And Providence has established control since their big first half run where they scored 17 straight points. Again, still in the first part of the season where you see a lot of non-conference 
opponents. January lines up a three, and she's off target again. And Ford Washington will be called for the foul. That's her third. So Richfield will have to work out some foul management. So you're still in that mode where you could have some surprises. Of course, there's always a chance for unusual headlines at this level, but the biggest area for upsets or unexpected results is December, well, that first weekend in November, of course, or that last weekend. The teams are still learning their identity, still learning how to play. Of course, they still have winter break to get through, and oh my goodness, Ratliff Layup a little short. January, pull up. Oh, she has not found her stroke tonight. Here comes some Richfield pressure. Jump ball, Richfield with the possession arrow. Richfield getting stingier on defense, but they are not finding their shot offensively. And so while they're getting some defensive stops and getting a few breaks, they're not able to take advantage. Ford Washington will step out and in her place. Barnes. <laughs> Limblum with the cross court pass. Ratliff picks it off and a fast break layup. And as I mentioned earlier, cross court passes are dangerous, and Ratliff just showed you why. Hapke fouls Barnes. Providence still has three to get. So Lions doing an effective job of fouling when the Richfield isn't shooting. So these fouls aren't of much consequence. The foul is Hapke's second. And she will take a seat. January. Looking for Barnes. Overthrows her. Liam Wise takes a full timeout with 8.48 left, and it appears Providence Academy is closer and closer to wrapping this one up. Spoke with the Ridgefield coaching staff, and this was no secret coming into this season. Jessica January, a heavily recruited player. A lot of Big Ten schools are taking a look at her, although she is still living out the high school experience, hasn't made any indication where she will go. But at least tonight, in this season it appears, consistency has been one of her issues. Last season she put up about 26 points per game. This year, that average a bit down so far. We'll see how that shakes out when we get to conference play in the Classic Suburban League. But a few folks thinking that 2013 class will have a lot of talent, maybe enough to rival those superstar years from 07 through 09, or even back in 2006 when you had you know, Jenna Smith, Angel Robinson, you know, Kiara Buford, Courtney Boylan, Georgie Jones, although she got hurt and uh, at Indiana, Tori ACL, her college career is done. Taylor Hill, Brittany Chambers, so many big names, so many uh, talented players. And that 2013 class, January is a part of, also features the likes of Rebecca Dahlman, who figures to be the all-time record holder in career scoring if she stays healthy and keeps at her pace. And Tyshawna Johnson from the South. She's done some damage in her high school career. And don't forget about those Providence juniors that we talked about, Healy and Zabla. Well, Healy's a senior, I should say, but Zabla and Finley and Ratliff. Not to discredit Healy, she's done quite a good job herself. Foul is on Healy, who is off of a loose ball. 
her first. Providence with two more to give. Fouling, not much of an issue for either team. Anna Wise looking inside the Barnes, and there is no place for Barnes to go. Wise, that was not a good pass from her, and that did not set up Barnes well. That's not a play you'd want to run. Guyton, look out, Mike. Guyton pokes it away, but Providence keeps it with 7.57 left. Zabla's fouled. She'll get free throws. <laughs> Leaves the first one short. Zabla hasn't been effective from the free throw line tonight. Makes the second, gives her seven. Providence up by nine. Richfield hasn't come as close as, or hasn't come within six in the second half. January out to Ford Washington. I don't know, that shot looked like it was out of form. Threw me off for a moment. And here's a breakaway layup. And one, Lindblom with the foul. Ratliff with the basket. Ratliff still the only player in double digits. She has 16, has a chance to make it 17. Limblum will be subbed in for Beaver. And that just may be the basket that seals the game for the Lions. As Richfield They've tried to run their tempo. It just hasn't worked. Their shots haven't fallen for the most part, although Guyton sinks the long two with the assist from January. Providence has done a good job shutting down Richfield's biggest weapon. And here's Leah Zabla with a flashy layup. Zabla winning in style points tonight. Providence with a 12-point lead. January looking to make it 10. Can't get it off the bank. And a push foul on Richfield. I don't think too many people were expecting Jessica January to have just six points, but against a team like Providence, if you allow their tempo to dominate, you're not going to get many opportunities. The foul is on Wise, her third. Richfield's out of fouls to give. Finley going deep. Finding Healy, one-on-one. -on -one. Can't draw the foul, but Nordic is there for the offensive rebound. And it goes off of January. And Providence, as we mentioned, having the height advantage. Among their primary players, and they have done a great job at rebounding. That was one of their keys to the game, rebounding. It sounds simple. But it works, and Zabla gets called for the double dribble. She's not happy about it. But her team's up by 12. And Richfield running out of time. Richfield much better than they've been looking most of the game. And there's a double dribble on Beaver. She stopped momentarily. Richfield much better than they looked tonight. Just Providence has done a great job controlling the game and making it almost a home away from home tonight. Richfield figures to do some damage later on in the season. And a foul on Ford Washington. That will send Ratliff to the free throw line for a bonus situation. Foul is Ford Washington's fourth. And just nothing going right for the Spartans tonight.
Ratliff misses the free throw, and because it's a one and one, Richfield can rebound. And here's January, oh my goodness! That's the play we're accustomed to see Jessica January making. But her team's still down by 10. And Zabla is blocked by Guyton, no foul this time. Ford Washington out to Lindblom, fires the three, and that's off. Beaver, no good. That was almost too quick. And Jessica January gets it off Healy. He was looking for a fast break layup.